Today we're here to uh, demonstrate the Stryker Vary X2 plating system and we're going to go over some of the indications, the exposures, some of the techniques that we think you'll find useful and then we'll show you how these plates are designed to fit the needs of the foot and ankle surgeon. So there really isn't uh, much to worry about here. You have the saphenous vein coming down and there's some terminal branches of the saphenous nerve. But this incision is a very safe exposure. There's some crossing veins that will interfere, usually running from the dorsal side to the plantar side, and we can bovie those as we meet them. But this can be a sharp dissection done in a relatively expedient fashion. It's useful to invert and evert the foot so you can feel where that tail and navicular joint is. Here's the tuberosity right here and the post tib tendon is going to be coming down attaching to that. So I will open that up just dorsal. Sometimes uh, you can come into the posterior tibial tendon sheath just to identify where it is, but typically that's not necessary as part of the exposure and there's the tendon sheath right there. If it's a flat foot with a torn degenerative uh, painful posterior tibial tendon and we're doing a triple arthrodesis or a modified triple arthrodesis that's involving a tail navicular fusion, you can come down and excise that posterior tibial tendon and eliminate that pain generator. So now we will do a longitudinal incision and just raise an envelope of soft tissue to expose the tail navicular joint. This needs to be extended far enough dorsally that you can ex uh, expose it all the way around circumferentially. And by releasing that capsule, it allows you to distract that joint much easier. And that's going to be important when you're trying to prepare the joint surface, particularly on the lateral side, which can be hard to visualize. So we now have the tail and navicular joint. You can see the joint moving. This may be very osteophytic. There may be large dorsal osteophytes in this joint if it's, arth if it's an arthritic uh, joint. Usually the osteophytes that we see with this joint, if present, are going to be on the dorsal lateral side as that is the compression side of the, do of the tail navicular. With a spreader like this, slide it down. That allows you to free up your hands. Uh, and now we can get in there quite easily and work on scraping. An important side note, after the joint is prepared, uh, the lateral side of this joint you can usually get with a curved small mini lambot or a small uh, curved curette. Once you get down to subchondral bone, all the cartilage has been removed. We use a small drill, small K-wire, just to fenestrate the joint in multiple areas. The goal here is to try to get through that, that subchondral bone into the vascular tide mark layer of the subchondral bone to promote some bleeding and bring in uh, uh, fresh blood supply to what can often be very sclerotic bone. After we've done that, the next order of business is to ensure a reduction. So we get all of these things out of the way. Typically when we're doing this, the patient is laying like this and I'll have them on a bump. So I'm working this way with the foot or the leg turned out. But at this point, I'm really focusing on where do I want this joint lined up. So I will prep out the tibial tubercle so I can see the axial, or the, the axial alignment of the leg. And I want to position that forefoot perpendicular to the axis of the tibia. It's important to understand that sometimes dorsiflexion occurs through the mid-tarsal joints. So you have to restore the alignment of the first ray from the talus all the way down to the first metatarsal to determine the position of reduction. And I've, I'm holding the hind foot with my hand and I'm controlling the position of the tail and navicular joint and feeling that reduction with my thumb all the while looking at the tibial tubercle and the relationship to the forefoot, the goal being I want the second toe lined up to the tibial tubercle. So I'm looking like this. I like what I see. The reduction feels good. And I will have my assistant or my resident 
uh, whoever that is, put a K wire in there and hold that joint in position. Now you can see that joint is no longer mobile. So the Variax 2 system has uh, two different size plates, and these plates are designed to fit the contour of the tail. Of the There's a short plate and a long plate, depending on the size of the foot, and this is a judgment you will make intraoperatively. The plate is designed to fit on the medial side, which is really the biomechanically advantaged uh, design to allow this plate to act as an I-beam to resist the deforming forces, which are going to be from plantar to dorsal. Uh, there you can see the design of the plate with three screws proximal and three screws distal. Now it's important when you're doing these fusions that we get compression across the joint. So we know that fusions heal the best when you have maximum amount of bone, contacting bone with a good joint prep, lack of cartilage, all the fibrous tissues are removed, we've fenestrated the subchondral bone, and now we need to compress that. So this plate has a dynamic K-wire hole and a static K-wire hole. If I place this in the dynamic hole, we can then add another K-wire into the static hole. And we can use a small compressive clamp to squeeze those down. So we now have the joystick locked to the plate. Just gives you a little more leverage if you want to reach down here and clamp that joint into compression. The dynamic K-wire position is designed to allow you to compress with those K-wires in place. As you can see, this joystick allows us to place an additional K-wire through the joystick. So you have several options of, of K-wire placement to help hold your reduction. Uh, whatever works best in terms of getting them out of your way for screw placement and compressing that joint is uh, something you'll have available. Here's our talus, here's our navicular. We have our plate laying right here. Three screws available in each bone. This screw is going to achieve its maximal success if it's angled either straight across or slightly planter. This screw should be angled slightly dorsal. They all have a variable 15 degree option or a fix. This screw can be straight across. On the AP x-ray, the Taylor neck our plate is coming over from the medial side, so we actually want to measure the length of these screws and engage that lateral cortex, whereas in the navicular, you have a cuboid over here, so it's not as important in the navicular to engage this cortex, and you also want to be cognizant of the fact that the cuneiform joints further distal, if you're not going to incorporate them into the fusion, need to be avoided. So these screws should be directed in a way that accommodates this concave surface of the proximal navicular, but avoids the convex surface of the distal navicular. And the plate is designed to allow you to do that. So we will go ahead and place a navicular screw. This screw is uh, going to be the screw that locks my plate into position. I can start getting my distal K wires out of the way. Before I lock proximally, I want to be sure that my joint is thoroughly compressed. 
A point about the drills, the orange drill is a 2.6 millimeter drill. This is your shank diameter. Uh, there's a 3.5 millimeter drill. If you decide to place a lag screw, uh, you would use the single orange thread drill. So this is a double orange 2.6 millimeter drill to be used in non-lag fashion. I'm on the dorsal side of this plate. I'm gonna angle it slightly plantarly and go ahead and exit through that lateral cortex. This we will measure. You should be able to appreciate that lateral cortex with a depth gauge and it's usually gonna be in the 36 range, give or take. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a locking screw on here just to demonstrate. And these uh, screwdrivers are star-shaped. They're locking. They hold your screws very well. These can be put on power or by hand or by ratchet. The other option with this plate is there is a compression screw hole available. So uh, in this situation, your compression will be obtained directly through this uh, compression screw hole. You'd place your proximal screws first. You'd put your K-wire in the dynamic K-wire hole and then place your compression screw. This compression screw hole can accommodate either a locking or a non-locking screw. So what we have here is our final product is a very low profile plate, which is contoured to fit the anatomical surface of the medial side of the tail and navicular joint. Low profile heads, but three screws proximal, three screws distal, arranged in a pattern that ensures you will avoid the navicular cuneiform joint and engage both the talus and the, the navicular in an optimal way. The plate itself is functioning much like an I-beam. The deforming forces are going to be from planter to dorsal. So you have an I-beam of maximal strength, lowest profile in ideal design.